The praise of the Creator this morning. The one that might even bell set up on a limb and they'll church. Uh, the trees out here, they're grazing. Uh, you know what they're doing? They're raising their limbs uh, toward the God of heaven that might even live in. So this morning, let's you and I, let's, let's praise the Lord for a little while. Mm-hmm. Let's just worship and live with it. She's uh, asking, she wants to sing a couple of songs. Uh, so we'll let her come and uh, sing a song, and then we'll get into it. Amen. Bless the Lord.
anybody this year. I don't believe there's a person here this morning that's here by accident. Right. Maybe something small this morning. I can make the right way out of point here. But I'm feeling the sport in the overwhelming thing for the gym knowledge. Now I don't know. I'm not I don't know the I am just no more. But if while she's saying it, she makes up the mold. That's all we're looking for.
And when he had brought them into his house, he sat meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. Let's go to the Lord this morning, please, in the word of prayer, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the day. Thank you for the blessings of life. Thank you for the service thus far. The Lord Jesus, we thank you now for the reading of your word. God, I pray now the Holy Spirit to minister to the hearts and lives of you people today, God. Lord Jesus, I pray that your Holy Spirit would anoint this congregation today for the hearing of your word. Lord Jesus, I pray that you'd anoint me today, God, for the preaching of your word. Lord Jesus, we need the option of the Holy Spirit. God, we need the Holy Ghost today. God, we ask you to encamp angels around about this place. Uh, God, back up the opposing powers of hell. God, those are here today that need, uh, God, something special from you. Uh, Lord, today we just ask God today, Lord, that you will uh, take your nails to our hands today, Jesus. Break the bread of life over the table of this thy people's heart. God, Jesus, I pray that you'll hook our heads and our hearts and our hands up with heaven this morning. Give us spiritual discernment. Uh, God, Jesus, help us today, uh, Lord, to look to you, the ark from the finisher of our faith. And Lord, we'll be careful, Lord, to give you the praise and the honor and the glory for everything that's said and done here today. And what you do for us, we'll thank you and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We're looking at the Philippians jailer here this morning. And the statement that he made serves, uh, uh, what must I do to be saved? Uh, and I believe that's the question that's been echoing and ringing down through uh, the time and down through history. Uh, as we look into the Scriptures, even as far back uh, as we can go in the Old Testament, I believe people have been asking the question, what must I do to be saved? I believe there's a, uh, there's a world full of people out there today uh, thinking, what must I do to be saved? And as I thought on this, uh, I thought about uh, how the devil throws a camera field out there, Brother Jim, uh, and he tries to get people off on uh, uh, something other than Jesus Christ. Uh, there's many things out there today, uh, and uh, there's many uh, things, many, there's even religion out there today uh, uh, that's dragging people off away into a Christless eternity. Uh, but Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But, and no man comes unto the Father, he said, but by me. Hallelujah. And can I tell you today, uh, for those, those that are seeking, uh, uh, for those that are asking, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Uh, I, I say the same thing that the Apostle Paul said. Uh, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Hallelujah. Oh, the angel question. What must I do? Uh, there's, uh, there's folks that are doing all kinds of stuff today to try to be saved. And then there's some that don't even know Brother Greg. I thought it's a few years ago, but uh, I, uh, I was uh, in a workplace, I was working, and uh, I, I met a fella that had moved here uh, from way out to. Uh, uh, in a, on the West Coast. He comes from the West Coast, moved over here, and he was trying to get started. And uh, we was out there talking one evening, we was on break, and somebody said something about somebody getting saved. And uh, he said, what's getting saved? What, what does that mean? I've never heard of that terminology before. And I tell you, there are folks around that, uh, that uh, don't even know about being saved. That don't even know about being born again. Now, the message is this morning, that when we get down there, this man's asking a question, Sir, what must I do to be saved? But I'm going to tell you what he started doing. He was looking at Paul and Silas in life. Can I tell you, there's a world full of folks today looking at yours in my life. Her, this man looked at Paul and Silas, his wife, and they have enough God on them and enough conviction on them after they've been through the trials and after they've been through the tribulations, they're in the jail cell, they're bloody, they've been beat, their feet are in stocks, it's midnight, it's dark, uh, they, they can't even see, and they, and they start singing praises unto God and start praying. And there's enough conviction about them that this man says, 
I think I want what they got. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. That's a sobering thought for me, good one. Oh, that somebody might want what we want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That somebody might look at you and I and our lives and say, what, what must I do to be saved? Mm-hmm. I want to go to heaven. I don't want to go to that awful place called hell. I want to go to heaven. What must I do to be saved? Of course, the author of this wonderful book of the Acts is Dr. Luke, the Gentile physician, Paul's a missionary companion. Uh, he, uh, he went with the Apostle Paul. We, we read Luke's writing, and uh, we understand he gives more details in the book of Luke and then through the book of Acts and his writings than any other. Written around 63 to 70 AD, written to the New Testament believers, written to you and I. Thank God that God, through His intimate mercy and uh, long suffering, when, when He sees what we don't, as that song said, He was looking down, praise God, through time and eternity, uh, looking down through the four doors of history, knowing there'd be a little congregation. Now, uh, uh, listen, uh, there's been a little congregation to sit here, just to go down through the years. Uh, those folks sitting in this church today uh, uh, that come to the knowledge of Christ right here on, on these grounds at some time uh, or another. They said, sir, what must I do to be saved? Uh, uh, there's folks, praise God, over at home, Brother Jim, uh, uh, in our own church. Uh, and what I'm saying is uh, uh, that down through the years, God has sent a message uh, and He give us the Word of God uh, to guide us into the way of truth. Amen. Well, I'm glad for that today. Hallelujah. Oh, that this is written to New Testament believers. Mm-hmm. I'm, uh, Brother Greg, I'm kind of glad that I'm living in a day and time in which I'm living in. <coughs> Brother Arnie, I, I wouldn't want to live back under the law. Number one, how many Jews have we got here this morning? Yeah. We're all Gentile about We was all without. We was all without the king. Mm-hmm. Oh, glory to God. Uh, that our Savior came. And he said, Other sheep I have, praise mm-hmm. God, that are not of this fold. Mm-hmm. <coughs> he is talking about you and I. Mm-hmm. And so us New Testament believers, we have the canon of Scripture. And that uh, in the scripture, search them that you may have, you may find eternal life. You say, preacher, if you're searching and you want to find eternal life, right here, right. right here's where you find. Right. I'd love for I'd love for somebody to come follow. I would love to lead you to the Lord if you like. But can I tell you something, praise God, that if you get under conviction in the midnight hour, that verse of God of heaven, oh, you can call on his name, brother, mm-hmm. you, uh, wherever you're at. Uh, you may be in a car, you may be down at the barn, uh, uh, you may be out in the woods by a tree, uh, uh, but when you get like that old jailer uh, and you start thinking, what, I, what must I do to be saved? Uh, uh, you can call upon the name of the Lord and He'll save you. Amen. Amen. I love to leave people to the Lord. But I ain't always right. But sometimes there ain't nobody right. And when you need to get saved, you need to get saved. Amen. I remember the Sunday I got under conviction. I didn't go to the altar and get saved when the person get the altar call. I thought I'll do it later. That night I didn't do it again. And I thought, well, if this feeling don't get off of me, if this conviction don't leave me, I'll just I'll get saved next Sunday. But you know what happened? The conviction got worse and worse. Yeah. It bore down. Thank God, God didn't give up on me. Thank God, the conviction didn't leave. He bore down on me on Monday, and he bore down on me on Tuesday, 
And he bore down on me on me. If I thirsty, I was just in the state of miserable despair, brother Jim. Mm-hmm. That night, I was laying in the back room of that old house where my dad still lived. And my mom, when she'd come in there every night, they'd go by. She'd say, boy, I'm going to read you some scriptures. She'd read it to me and my brother. And then she'd pray. I still remember my mama praying. She read the scripture. She prayed. She said, good night, boys. And she shut her Bible. And she started going to the door. When she got a hold of that door, my brother, she I was trying to say something. And finally, I said, Mama. And she turned around, and I said, I don't think I've ever been saved. Yes. And she come over there, and she sat down, and she walked that big old Bible open to Romans chapter number 10, verse 9 and 10. And she read to me, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, man, believe in the righteousness. With the mouth, Confession is made unto salvation. Mm-hmm. And we bowed there and I prayed. And she prayed with me and I got saved by the grace of God. Mm-hmm. I'm saying I want to say this. She, she didn't go get on the phone and call the police. <laughs> she didn't even call. She didn't even holler for me. I don't say. You know what she did? She just walked out my wall. She read me the scripture. And, and told me to call on the Lord, and I called on the Lord to yeah. say, mm-hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. That's what salvation is, folks. It's busting in the Lord. Yeah. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how young you are. At some point in time, everybody's life, they come to the age of accountability. Mm-hmm. That's the age when they realize right from wrong, and they realize they need to say, Amen. Mm-hmm. That's what I believe. Sir, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Our saints is always. How did the Philippian jailer get converted? <laughs> now, as I wrote that down on that, Brother Jim, I had to think. Converted is a word we don't hear much anymore in modern day women, isn't it? We don't hear much of that being converted. But that's what God does. That old jailer, he got converted. Didn't he? Mm-hmm. What can I say something about the jailer? And I'm trying to hurry along. But I ain't going to get hurt. He was hard and he was cold and he was in his jail. He was a man in a jail. If he wasn't pretty rough, carry it to the one. I don't know. He's probably carried out orders of that that were hideous. The people that were coming into that jail, I say, well, that, this, this man that saw the words of the word, and he probably even saw uh, poor old Paul and Silas. Uh, they probably had their arms around somebody, and they probably just come and dragging the, dragging the men and dragging their feet the way they'd been beat. Mm-hmm. But God changed his man home. Mm-hmm. We find him over here at the end of our story. Oh, after he got saved, uh, uh, he's out there washing their stripes, uh, uh, washing the wounds off of them, uh, and he's getting baptized, and he's taking them back to the house to set and meet before him. Rejoicing, the Bible said, with his family. Mm-hmm. That's what happens when we get saved by the grace of God. Mm-hmm. There's rejoicing involved. There's a rejoicing in heaven over one sinner of that repentance. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. So he was converted. Paul and Silas, listen, Paul and Silas, what were they doing? They were living the God. If I was studying, thinking about things this week and uh, reading over some things, I grabbed a pe- pen and a piece of paper, and uh, I don't want to get too personal, but I wrote on the top of that paper some of my goals as a Christian. Some of my goals for my Christian life. You know what one of them was? To impersonate the God. 
flat to impersonate the gospel. How do we do that by living like Jesus? Mm -hmm. Amen. We're saved by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. this, this is a daily walk, Brother Turner. Forgives us the verse that I had. I thank you. Now we were the same about how God, in His mercy and washing us in the blood, forgives us of our past and our present and our future sins mm -hmm. and makes us fit subject for heaven. Right. Mm -hmm. We're washed in the blood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And He faithful and just forgives us of our sins when we mm -hmm. ask Him to forgive us. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. But can I say something? When you ask the Lord to forgive you and forgive you, forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've had brothers sometimes down through the years, brother Mike, beating myself up on the stuff God's already forgiven for. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got a good God this morning. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's so good. So how Paul and Silas were living the gospel. They impersonated the gospel. How do we do that? How do we impersonate the gospel? Number one, we do it by prayer. We don't pray enough, brother Jim. You know? I've been trying to pump up the volume on my. Uh, well, not well, my volume. The, uh, the whatever you call it, more prayer, more praying in my life. Pray a little more. Leave it up a little bit. You know, sometimes we just grow cold and indifferent on the wall. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, the other day, I'm not thinking more old. Boy, maybe I'm slacking off just a little bit. Maybe I need to pray just a little bit more. And so one way that we impersonate the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is to pray more. Mm -hmm. You can study too much. You may not believe it, but you read your Bible too much. I've done it. The eyeballs feel like we're going to pop out. Feel like you've got sandpaper in there. My brain, Brother Jim, still don't work like you used to. I can't, uh, you know, I just can't process things as good as I used to. And you can study too much. You can, you can do too much, but one thing you can never do too much of is pray. Right. You can't have a pray enough. As a matter of fact, the Bible says to pray without ceasing. Pray all the time. Pray about everything. Pray about praying. Amen. You say, Bruce, it's not. My brother, like, what are you going to Pray about praying. When I, when I first started the gym several years ago, I was getting down to business with God. Praying is hard to do. Sometimes I just make myself stay down there. Just make myself keep praying about things and whatever, and pretty soon you get in the habit of that. So impersonating uh, the gospel, how do we do that? And how did he see, how did the Philippians jailers see Paul and Silas? He saw them in prayer. Number two is preparation. What's the preparation? It's the Word of God. Mm -hmm. How do we impersonate the gospel? Well, we got to learn who Jesus is. We've got to learn what Jesus does. We've got to learn how Jesus wants us to walk. We do that through the Word of God. Faith so comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Right. Amen. There's not a person sitting in this building today that's saved by the grace of God that didn't hear the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Thank God for the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Lord God. Saw it through Christ. Saw it through preparation. The Word of God. Saw it through position. What's the position? We must be born again to impersonate the gospel. You've got to be saved. You've got to be born again to impersonate Jesus Christ. And do it in fear and truth. Yeah. Oh, the Apostle Paul. Silas, I believe that he walked uh, uh, trying his best to impersonate Jesus. So today, my goal, and I hope your goal is 
to impersonate the gospel, to impersonate Jesus Christ. To step up in prayer, to step up in preparation, to step up, to have that position, to be born again, and then to have courage. What is that person? Have a desire to see others saved. Mm-hmm. I thank God for this church supporting uh, the, the ministries that we support, trying to help others uh, be born again. But we got to remain good. But we got to keep our And even something else is uh, a lot of us in our life, in, in uh, the church world, I believe nowadays in general, is a soul winner. Right? Yeah. And uh, even even God can fix my heart over there. Not going out trying to reach lost souls, Sister Rebel, like we used to. We used to get out hand out tracks, kids. Mm-hmm. We'd go door to door. And uh, we went all over. Uh, we went all over Burnsville before, knocking on doors, handing out tracks, inviting people to come to the house of God. And uh, sometimes I try to make myself feel a little better about that, Brother Greg, because uh, Jehovah's Witnesses don't even do it no more. And I thought, well, that's actually good. <laughs> so uh, I don't feel bad about it. But, uh, hey, we, we need to do a little more, eh, man? We need to tell people, listen, we need to have that position, and we need to have that purpose and have a desire to see others saved. Now the key verse of the book I have, and this is Jesus speaking, and this is the uh, this is what really the impersonation of the apostle Paul and Silas and the others that we get through the book of Acts. He said that ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses of me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. Now, the first part of, uh, of that verse stirs a lot of madness to death now there. He said, you'll receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Amen. I'm a Holy Ghost man. I love the Holy Ghost. Amen. I love the Holy Spirit of God. Oh, I love preaching and the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. But I love praying in the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Right. I don't know, Daddy, at this point in time in my life, if there's anything that I like any more than praying in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost. What Jesus do? He's in a comforter. What do you say he's going to do? He's going to lead you into all truth. You know what that means? He's going to lead you into all truth if you want to be late. He leads you. He'll get you by the hand. He'll lead you along. He'll take you where you need to go if you're late. That's what he does. He corrects us when we're wrong. Amen. Bless the Lord. That's what the Lord does. That's what he seeks to come to the fold. To lead us into all truth. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost. Oh, and he said, "Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you." Right. Now, this is Jesus talking. He's telling his disciples. Over there in Acts chapter number one, and verse number eight, and verse number nine of that chapter, he goes away. He said, "Listen, fellas, you're going to see fire after the Holy Ghost comes on you." And as for you to see that and as for the Holy Ghost comes on you, you're going to be witnesses of me. And then here in Acts chapter number 16, we see Paul and Christ being witnesses to the Lord Jesus. And the Philippian jail. Oh, how he gives his heart and his life to the Lord Jesus. And not only just him, but his whole house. Purpose to teach us, no matter how much a person, listen, I was talking about Slippy and Jailer earlier, and uh, how that he was probably a hard man. And the hard line that he took, the hard job 
that he had. In chapter number 16, it's a chapter about salvation. Uh, we see Timothy getting saved in the first of the chapter. Uh, we see Lydia getting saved in this chapter. We see the damsel that possessed with a spirit of divination that was followed and all around uh, getting saved by the grace of God. And then the Philippian jailer is getting saved. The purpose, of the, the purpose of this is to teach us no matter how much a person is steeped in sin, they may still receive salvation through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Say, for instance, the thought I might get saved, they sure can. If they accept Jesus and get saved, Christ will make a new creature out of them. Amen. Yeah. I believe that, Brother Jim. He, he saved from the gutter blood most to the gutter most. I don't believe there's no sin that the blood of Jesus Christ couldn't clean. And no matter, this poor little old girl, she was, uh, she had that spirit of divination. It, it was an evil spirit. It was a demon. Uh, like a, if you study that out, it, it was a serpent demon. It was something like that. Uh, that possessed this young damsel. And these men made a, a merchandise out of her. She was a storyteller, a soothsayer, whatever. I guess she, she told people her horses, I don't know. But she was ready to say, and God said, Amen. No matter how much, I think she's glad, no matter how much. I was thinking this, what is I'm a whosoever will name. Yeah. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah. Amen. I'm, uh, I'm not a coward. I'm a whosoever will. I believe that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord is going to be saved. Amen. Yeah. That's what we believe. Hallelujah. Oh, and that's the purpose in which we see the salvation. No matter how much. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now, I already went over that. That question has been asked down through the years. Now, I heard, I heard, I'm going to burn through these three points that I The jailer had come to the point in life where he realized he needed to be saved. Now, what did the Philippian jailer See him Paul and Silas. Number one, he saw a witness for Christ. First Corinthians chapter number four, verse number two. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man can be found faithful. Yeah. Amen. <coughs> a witness for Christ. What was what was Paul and Silas doing? They were being faithful. You know what being faithful? Call me God and bait, God and throw the day. Just like Jesus was, they were falsely accused. It says in that chapter that they grew the knowledge of the Master. In the context of Scripture, what that means is, is they got them, uh, they beat them down and got them by the feet and drove them through the street. Many stripes. They ripped their clothes off of them and they received many stripes. But they were found faith in the midnight hours of praise. And singing praises of the God. Can I tell you, in the midnight hour, when the devil will beat you down, when you don't think you can go on, when it's dark all around you, when it's dark outside, <coughs> amen? Now, can I tell you, if you pray and sing praises unto God, I believe the God of heaven will come to where you're at. I believe if you'll be faithful, praise God, he'll be faithful, amen? Amen. amen. Lord and God. It's required of students that a man be found faithful. A witness for Christ. They were faithful in their prayer life. Verse number 13. And then again in verse number 16. The Bible says, And on the Sabbath day they went uh, out of the city by the riverside where prayer was wont to be made. Now, it was a Jewish custom back then if there wasn't a synagogue in the town, they went out by the city. Now, 
think about it. I love going by the river. I, I've always loved going to the river. Me and Jim, we used to go to this and get with us, Jim. He got a little old uh, Ford Ranger truck. We used to run the wheels off of that thing, wouldn't we? Me and him would go through out fishing. We'd go all over the place. Me and Brother Jim, we go way back. I'm so glad to see Jim and Ethel this morning. They're just home folks. Come on. I was thinking about Brother Jim. Uh, we used to get out and cut back or together, didn't we, Jim? Or the salt tobacco that we cut, hung, uh, worked around and, and done things. Uh, and uh, I'm so sure thankful for that. Uh, and praise God for God's good souls. Uh, but uh, uh, they were down by the riverbank. Paul and Silas was. With the Jews where prayer was wont to be made. It was a legal meeting by Jim, verse number 16. We see the opposition to prayer. There's a hindrance. You know there'll be a hindrance to a prayer life. Sometimes I get down to pray, okay? And the cell phone, the dang dang, the bug thing. Or, uh, I got down the train one time, I remember years ago, uh, the Golden Hour started part. That's how my bedroom went. And I prayed, God, shut that towel's mouth up, and it shut, just like that, for the line. And I was just there on my knees, thinking, like Jesus. Then I went on back to pray. I said, hey, man, God, up here, start back. And I said, Father, how do we see it? I'd ask the Lord if he's going to shut that thing's mouth up and shut it firm. <laughs> but it is. It started back to bark. But it's so dead. And can I tell you, that can be a hindrance to a problem. Yeah. Anything can be a hindrance to a problem, for example. Those opposition, they're a hindrance. Came to find us today with the prayer of certain damsel, the best of the spirit of divination, met us, which brought the master as much game but food saved. I was going to pray, man, don't be it. It's going to pray, mate. Or the hen. The devil. Sending one out to opposition to prayer. Verse number 25, we see the outpouring of prayer. And at midnight, Paul was out of praise, same praise but unto God. And the prisoners heard me. The outpouring. Can you imagine that old dog does it? He, he's a big black dog. I go, Paul. Stop. Let's pray a while. Let's go pray to the dog head. The prisoners heard What a wind. Thinking about going up here above the park, making me a song I would start praying. I used to do that over home, but I had a song I would. Every time I go to pray, I take it wrong. So if you're dirty on the way on the ridge of the building, I always need to pray. Don't make a mind to me. It's just me and the Lord. I ain't praying. Not here again. Paul and Silas prayed. The prisoners heard them. Then they started singing praises under God. Verse number 25, that point of prayer. Verse number 26, the outcome of prayer. No, suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's fans were loose. Hallelujah. Like that one? Here's the outcome of prayer. They didn't know what was going to happen. They just prayed. God got hold of that place and he shook it. Everybody's bands and loose. So they were the witness for Christ in their prayer life. They were the witness for Christ in their pursuit. They followed the leadership of the Holy Ghost in verse number 6. Verse number 10, they followed the leadership of the Holy Ghost to preach the gospel. They were the witness for Christ not only in their prior life and in their pursuit, but in their persecution. Verse 19 through 24. They were persecuted. They were beaten for the cause of Christ. And then they went to prison. 
Why was they in prison? Because you can be a witness for Jesus anywhere in the world. The devil may take you and throw you in jail, but while you're in there, have a revival. That's what happened here. They started praying. They started praying. So there's the witness for Christ. Number two is with me in jail. He always, not only saw the witness for Christ, he saw the word for Christ. Verse number 25, they sang praise. Acts chapter number 5, verse number 41, they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Mm-hmm. Good assignment. Acts chapter number 5. They left, they told them, don't you preach, don't you teach no more to give you time. Or we're going to teach you. And they left, kept themselves worthy that they could suffer shame for his name. The words of the Christ. They couldn't be contained, the prisoner heard. They couldn't be concealed. Verse number 26, started that earthquake. They couldn't be home. All inside. The, sub, the, the, the servants of the Most High God can be falsely accused, they can be beat, they can be cast in the prison, but stopped. But they couldn't be stopped from praising God. Amen. Let's not let anybody stop us from praising God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God's dead, and they ain't gonna stop me from praising God. I'm afraid. Sometimes it's hard to do, Brother Greg. I mean, when you come out, it's a hard place. When you're bad and dead. When something happens in your life. But it all lies just that you pray. You say, Praise the Lord, but I'm not praying. Praise Him because He's good. Praise Him because He's God. When you get down on your knees and you want to pray and you don't know what to pray about, just start thanking you. That's what happened. The Holy Ghost will show up, I promise you. Thank you for the iron you breathe. Thank you for the blood that's about to do your body. Thank you for my heart that's beating in your chest. Thank you for eyes that can see, ears that can hear. Thank you for arms that can raise, legs that can walk. Thank you that you've got a church. Thank you that you've got a family. Thank you for health and strength. Thank you that everything is well with you. What it is. Yes. Oh, there's so much to thank you for. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for the blood that you shed up across the town. Praise God. Hallelujah. He saw the witness for Christ, the worship for Christ. Oh, well, actually. I heard he saw the wonder of Christ. The Philippians chapter. Servants, what must I do to be saved? Out of the darkness. You know, I believe the Holy Spirit just whispered the Bible while I was sitting in there in the dark. That old jail shook. The foundation shook. Everybody's chains fell off. The stocks flew off off. All probably been a little silent by the hand. They're sitting there and going, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What was that? Mm-hmm. You know what happens? If the prisoner's escaped, he has to give his life to her. That old that guard out there, that jail is pulling his sword out. He's going to take his own life because he's surely every one of them gone. Out of the darkness, he hears a voice. Sir, do yourself no harm. We're all here. Oh, he grabs the light. Goes in for him. I can't believe we're all still here. And he falls down at their feet trembling. This is the wonder of Christ. Uh, God's working on him. The Lord's showing him. Uh, he's getting under conviction right here. Uh, he's getting convinced right here. And he's fixing to get converted right here. Yeah. He raised the mask. The one of Christ by the judge. This is a miracle in this story. This all for a life. He's praying in. He came trembling. And he fell down before Paul was 
He dropped them out and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? Say, Sir. Boy, I'm the Lord Jesus Christ. And now, if y'all be saved, then I have. They spake unto him the word of the Lord, and all that were in his house. And he took them that same night of the night. And he washed their stripes and was baptized. He and all he is a straightway. When he brought them into his house, he sent me before them. And rejoiced, believing in God with all the time. There's a joy to you. When there's salvation, when God changes the life, oh, there's a joy. As we stand this morning, this is you, you'll come and play. He said, Son, with all of his hands, rejoicing in the fact that he had come out of darkness into that marvelous light. Do you remember that day this morning that we're after man and eyes and blow? Do you remember that day? When you were the way you got to call that. What must I do to be saved? A miraculous thing happened. There was a transaction. You tied to death of the life. Was there be a woman here this morning? Say, raise your eyes. I've never been saved. I've never been born again. Raise your hand. I want to bear you. I want to pray for you. Would there be a woman? Anyone. Anyone. Never been born again. Don't know that I'm saved. Would there be a one here this morning? Raise your eyes, saved. But I need some help from the Lord. Would you raise your hand? Raise your hand this morning. I want to pray for you. Hey, I've got a call back. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you so much. I see those things. All hands up all over the house. Thank you so much. I'm going to pray for you. Would there be a one this morning, Brother Richard? I just need something a little extra special from the Lord. I need to get the altar. I want you to pray with me. Would there be a one? Anyone this morning? Would there be a one? I want to pray with you. Whatever your need may be this morning, would there be a one? Amen. Thank you so much for coming. Would there be another this morning? Would there be another coming this morning? Thank you so much for our support. Anyone this morning? Anyone else? I'm going to pray to see that it's coming. <clears throat> Father, in Jesus' name, we come before you this morning. God, we're thankful for your goodness and your mercy, your love, your honor, your love, 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 God, Jesus, I come now before you. God, pray for Brother Jim. I pray for touching the Lord and God. God, I pray for him. Lord Jesus, my prayer is the Lord Jesus here. God, that you'll touch him. Lord Jesus, wherever. God, the infirmity that you may have. God, Jesus, whatever that you may be. Lord Jesus, I pray for him. Lord, that you'll touch him physically, Lord. Touch him in his mind. Touch him in his heart. God, Jesus, today, I pray for Sister Ed and Ever, Lord. God, Jesus, help us through these hard times. Lord, we love them. We know you love them. God, Jesus, I just ask you to do that for us, Jesus, that we can't do it. Lord, I pray this morning for all those that lift in her hands this morning. Jesus, any hands were lifted here today. God, I pray for them this morning, Jesus. I pray for God, Jesus. God, I pray for Ed and Jesus. Lord, I pray for every individual that's here today. God, I pray that you'll minister to me to their heart. God, I pray, Lord, that you'll help us. God, through the coming day. Lord Jesus, what you do for us. Lord, we'll thank you. We'll pray. Jesus' name.
Lambo to service the now and we'll be back here at 6 o'clock. Uh, once again, for the county of Tyler, come back to service. And uh, if all hearts and minds are clear, God bless you. You're a good